So I'm just feeling my way around right now. It's summer, and um, one thing about crappies is they're really easy to bank on in the winter, in the fall when they're over basins, in the spring when they push up shallow, getting bulrushes and in lily pads. But once summer hits, they really start roaming. The nice thing is that they'll be really concentrated in schools, but they're harder to land on because by now the weeds have really come up and they're basically just roaming along those weed lines. So the first step that I like to do is identify those weed lines. And on this lake, we've got tall, healthy cabbage, which in a lot of lakes tend to grow out into pretty good depths of up to 18 feet. And it creates this wall. Here we go. Bucket. <laughs> Large mouth sitting there too. Like I said, I'm feeling my way around and I'm using panoptics right now because I can see those stalks of cabbage a long ways off. See if we can swing them. So I'm trying to stay back off of them because these schools can be pretty skittish and they're really hot and heavy when you start catching them. But I want to stay off them a little bit. And now visually with my eyes, I can see tall beds of cabbage. So I'm going to stay off the deep side and comb my way through them. And there's a couple baits I want to look at that are really going to be some of the better options for fishing in this tall grass for summer crappies. So before I even got out here, I was able to eliminate a ton of water because what I'm really looking for is places where the crappies have just come out of, meaning fertile spawning bays that have maybe more of a muck bottom, more bulrushes and lily pads adjacent to deep water. So there's a little horseshoe back here, a little inside turn leading into a fertile bay. It's just loaded with thick, tall cabbage, loaded with lily pads. So not long ago, the crappies were spending time in there, spawning, doing their thing. Now they've just pushed out to that tall weed line. These weed lines can be pretty expansive and crappies can be in tight little wads. So you wanna choose lures that you can fish on a horizontal plane, cover water with, sometimes make a long cast with but there are a lot of options for that. One tried and true classic one is just using a beetle spin. Or you can just, like I like to do, just buy those little attachable blades that come with them and you can put them on any jig you want. But one nice thing about that, well I'll tell you two nice things about that. It kind of helps you keep the bait up because you want to take it slow. I got my tip up the whole time. Crappies tend to feed up and sometimes they don't move real fast. So you want a bait that kind of stays up in the water column a little bit. And you could use a jig head, but those have a tendency to sink down faster. So the blade helps keep that bait up a little bit. The other great thing about that is it's just essentially a micro spinner bait where the hook is after that little wire for the blade. So when you're pushing through weeds, the blade comes in contact with that first, pushes it out of the way, and you're not going to get hung up near as much. So it's a great option to fish in tall weeds like this. Oh, there we go. There's a crappie right there. I just kind of crept up into where I can see those weeds. So that just tells me, yeah, they're really hugging that weed line. That's a good cutter. But I don't know if I feel like cleaning fish today. But good indication. Like I said, I'm going to back up a little bit now. I don't want to be right on top of them. It's fairly clear water and they tend to run in little schools. So I'm just going to put her right back in there. Unless you do want to keep her. There we go. That's such a good feeling. Like I said, you're just letting that thing hang there and float and all of a sudden, poof. I love the way crappies hit a bait. They just, you know, inhale it. So you can feel it really good. It's not nibbling like a bluegill. There's a smaller fish, but like I said, we've kind of narrowed down a little area here where I can fan cast and hopefully keep pulling fish out of it because it seems like there's more than one here now. Sinking. There we go. All right. So, like I said, we've got this little dinker, but We've got weeds. This is a great bait for running through the weeds. I'll show you on the underwater footage. Cabbage is a broadleaf uh, weed, so it kind of pushes those big leaves out of the way and it can push those stems out of the way too. Obviously, like I said, great bait for kind of staying horizontal, pushing through weeds, but I'm going to show you a couple other baits that I like to use now that we've located some fish. 
So the name of the game in summer when you're talking about crappies is finding the fish. Right now, like I said, we're looking for tall weed lines. That's a magnet for crappies in the summer, but they're going to be roaming. They're always burning around. That's kind of their characteristic. So first of all, you got to find the good weeds. Second of all, you got to use baits that you can poke and prod around until you actually run into those schools. So I'm going to run through a couple baits. As I mentioned, basically a safety pin style spinner bait or the classic beetle spin Mr. Twister blade that you can easily take on and off, put your favorite jig head on there, favorite plastic. Uh, this one is a hand tied hair jig from Jason Sealock. It's a VMC moon eye jig on there. I do like hair because it's durable. For the most part, you're not always switching out plastics and stuff like that. So hair is kind of nice, plus it keeps the bait up a little bit. A lipless bait is a really fun bait and I don't just cast and wind this. This is a bait that I can cast a little bit farther so it's another good bait for when I'm trying to cover water and this is a bait I'll reel really slow and just kind of pop it every once in a while. It might not look like it but this is a fairly weedless bait as well because you have the ability to rip it. So a lot of times if that little beak gets hung on a stem, any particular weed, you can just rip the bait and a lot of times it'll just cut those weeds right in half and you're back in action. So lipless bait is a big deal. I'll show you how that runs through the weeds. Again, a bait I can cast a little bit longer and a bait I can fish sometimes at greater depths. If I really need to sink a bait down parallel to a weed line, that one tends to bomb a little bit faster. So we're looking at two of the lipless category baits here. Um, this is a Yozuri Ratlin Vibe. Like I said, this has got um, some little little beads in it which, which gives it a tight rattle and that's going to draw attention to it. This is a slab wrap. No noise. A little bit of split ring noise. Really no noise. Like I said a lot of times, especially if you're right on top of these fish, they can be skittish. So the noise does sometimes scare them away. This is good for when you're fishing long distances. If you're right over the top of these fish, this is a little bit more subtle. There's plenty of action with this bait but they're not always scared, especially at close quarters when there's a crappie just nosing up to it. If you jerk it one time and that loud rattle will sometimes spook them, so it's a good idea to go with a quieter bait like the slab wrap. So two other baits that I've really started to love fishing with uh, are these little Rapala micro crankbaits. Both kind of have their strengths. The interesting thing about them is that they sink, so you can fish them like a jig. Like I said, Crappies, you kind of got to let it sit there in front of them before they decide to eat it sometimes. So a bait that slowly sinks, much slower than a jig head would sink, is a good choice. Like I said, you have two options. You got a deeper bill and a shallower bill. Both of these work really good. This thing looks like a little darting minnow. It's amazing. This one, I can fish a little bit deeper, which is kind of why I like it more. Also, having a little bit longer bill. Like I said, if I do get hung up with that bill in the weeds, I can just give it a little rip a lot of times they'll just rip it free. So these are two baits, I, like I said, I've adopted for fishing a lot, spring and summer. Summertime, this gets down deep so I can really parallel weed lines and I can fish it slow like a jig. So I'll show you what that looks like underwater as well and how efficient it is in the weeds. So this is just a regular jig head <clears throat> and a plastic. Um, this is a Lunker Hunt Bento Minnow and that thing really does look like a spitting image of a minnow. One thing that I really like about these baits is they are very durable. I do shy away from plastics a lot of times because they get chewed up quickly and you're just not getting back into the water all the time. This one's a good option because it actually is very durable. Uh, bluegills, crappies have little sandpaper mouths. They really chew up the back end of a lot of these plastics. Also, this is a decent profile as far as minnow plastics go for panfish. One benefit is that of that is that it keeps it up a little bit. Like I said, sometimes when you know you're trying to get a crappie to bite, keeping your tip up, you sink it a little bit. This will sink straight down too fast, and a crappie will lose interest. It's not always going to chase, especially straight down. So, if you can use a plastic that helps keep that bait up a little bit, so you're not reeling too fast. A lot of times, if you have a heavier bait, you have to reel faster to compensate for that. And when you do that, you're making the crappie do more work. So. I really like baits that you can kind of float and keep up and parallel those weed lines. So this is also a fun one for just keeping your tip up, twitching, 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 and just waiting for that dead stop of your bait. So don't forget a little jig, that can be a good one too. So this looks like a goofy bait, and I have to mention it for a reason because we're talking about summer. And one thing that coincides with summer is bug hatches. So right here we're looking at a mayfly nymph. 
and what happens with mayflies is they emerge out of the mud and then as they become flies they float on the surface for a while until they can dry out and take off so there's a very vulnerable period of time where uh, these bugs are numerous and they can't escape fish so they tend to just gorge on them so when there's a bug hatch going on this is a really good bait too uh, this is actually a bait that I'll fish horizontally as well. Uh, I can put on a casting bubble and I can cover a little bit more water with this bait, but I kind of just will flip this thing out there and keep it real close to the surface. It does sink, and I'll show you how that looks like underwater too, but a lot of times midsummer you get those bug hatches, they'll be crappies just blowing up all over the surface, so you want to have something bug-like in your summer arsenal. I want to talk about two baits. Um, if you're in a neck of the woods that really grows some slab crappies, here are two really good baits for that too. This is a chatterbait micro. Even here in northern Minnesota, I've caught crappies on bass spinner baits and stuff like that. Characteristic of chatterbaits is that they're loud, but obviously comes in a tiny little package that fits in crappies' mouths. So I have had fun with this bait before. I'm casting it in around vegetation, kind of steering it around. The blade on it helps me keep it up. So this is another cool option when you've kind of got maybe some larger crappies in your body of water. And kind of along those lines, and we'll catch some fish here today on this too, but a small spy bait. You know, even bass spy baits are pretty small, but this one's specifically designed for crappies. Perfect little profile there. And this little particular spy bait happens to be a Jenko Shinobi Shad. Like I said, specifically designed for crappie spy bait. And this is something that you're just going to slow wind through those weeds. You know, if you're visibly watching it, well, you can count this bait down to a certain depth too. But if you're watching it, you can use your rod tip and your line to kind of steer it through the weeds. This one isn't going to be as weedless as some of these other baits, given that you can't really rip it that hard. This is a bait that slowly moves and hangs, which again is something that crappies like. So this is a cool bait for that as well. So... If you're a guy that maybe doesn't have electronics, a really good way to cover water is to troll. This whole bay is going to have nice tall cabbage on it, but who knows where that little stack of fish is going to be. So you can take this and run it right outside the weeds, and then maybe you start running into a fish, turn around, make another pass, catch another fish. Then you can kind of concentrate your efforts to that little corner where those fish are sitting. Um, so a lot of baits here to cover water with, but this is a good option for when you're trolling just a little micro crankbait. So this is a jig and wrap right here, Rapala jig and wrap. And um, I just want to mention it because there are lakes, especially around here, with weed lines that go out to 18 feet. And you can fish right over the boat vertically in that case. So you can do kind of the video gamey thing with the trolling motor and the graph right off the bow of the boat with this. This is a bait that drops straight down, but fishes great distances horizontally when it's down there. Deeper applications, when the crappies are down a little deeper, uh, this is a good option for that. So a lot of what I've talked about is the ability to cover water and find crappies. Big expansive weed lines, there can be massive schools, but where are they sitting on those weed lines? So you want to use bait so you can cover water quickly um, to find those fish. When you do, there's a ton of different things that you can use. They tend to be very competitive and they'll eat real well, especially if you can get a visual beat on these fish. If you can see these crappies, say it's flat calm, crappies are sitting up in the weeds. You can back off of them and use a quiet approach like a little thin pencil bobber, a little plastic, a little jig and a minnow, and let the fish come to the baits. When you do that, you don't want to get right up on top of them, so you can throw a bobber out, let it drift into those fish, you know, let a minnow work its way there, maybe twitch a little bit of a plastic and soak something and really just have a ball with fish once you've located them. It's kind of an efficient way to do it, especially if you're with somebody that is maybe a little inexperienced and likes having that strike indicator, a little more simple to fish, still very, very effective. So once you find those fish, everybody tie up a bobber and just start plucking them out of there. There you go. There's just loads of them off this weed line. <laughs> Gonna have to sort through a couple, but there you have it. A uh, couple baits to look at for summer weed line crappies. The two things you really wanna think about are 
the ability to cover water and the ability to fish in thick weeds efficiently. So take a look at some of those baits, um, use your electronics, use your mapping, find those inside turns, those tall weed lines, and then apply some of these baits and you'll catch a bunch of crappies this summer.